Hey everybody, today we're going to dive into some creative techniques on both the canvas as well as using control layers. We're going to really look at how we can use some of the tools inside of Invoke to get a unique visual effect and style that really is imbued by our creative intent. So we've got a couple of kind of rough values sketches here, and we're going to play around a little bit with control layers going in and applying some different styles to these. Now, right now in release candidate status, this is not live to everybody, but this is in release candidate, depending on when this gets posted to YouTube, it may be live for everybody, but we'll see. Um, we've added a new prompt template feature, and I'll highlight a little bit of that today, just because I think this is going to be a really useful tool in leveraging Invoke going forward. Uh, but really, it's going to be a, a nice way of switching between different styles, and I'm going to try to use that a little bit here. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is add a control layer. I'm going to throw in our uh, kind of sketch here. The thing that I'm going to do, though, is what do I want to do? I think I want to get maybe do a scribble and I'm going to do a H E D processor instead of line art. Cause I want to get maybe a little bit of like a thicker line on here. This is more like a soft edge, uh, type look. Um, so it'll process that real quick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to one of the default templates, uh, maybe concept art painterly. Now, what it's doing behind the scenes when I set a prompt template is it's appending a positive and a negative prompt to whatever I put in or kind of composing that as part of the template itself. Most, most of the defaults are just going to append um, and you can actually view what it is appending by hitting that toggle view mode. So if I type, you know, uh, you know, a jungle market scene in the positive prompt, I can actually see that behind the scenes, it's adding all this other stuff and that'll go in when I invoke, but I don't have to, I don't have to manage that. I don't have to manipulate that. And if I switch to something like uh, architectural visualization and actually see that it's going to change all of those behind the scenes as well. So this is a nice way to manage and change between different styles very easily. Uh, I'll use it a little bit today and maybe even create a new one if I need to, but we've got this scene in the background and I'm going to use that. Um, I've got this set at a weight of 0.65. We'll kind of give it a little bit of freedom there by pulling the end step in. Um, and I think we've got a relatively decent image here. What I may want to do though, and I'm going to play around with this a little bit later, we'll, we'll see what we get with just doing this as a painterly, uh, concept art, uh, and see, and see what we get started with. Cause we might, we might take this and then move this directly into the canvas. Um, we'll kind of see where we land. Uh, and it is, I did have to like restart. So it's just loading up the model. Um, let's go to viewing and preview that. So we've got maybe a little bit too painterly, but you know, it works. It's a good preset. Um, we've got like this palette knife look. There's a lot of texture. Um, maybe we like that. Maybe we don't. Let's go to our assets and see how off that is. Probably would imagine a little bit of this being different, but you know, I, I think we can kind of go in and do some controllers. Um, I am going to change the preset. Um, maybe to concept art fantasy, um, we'll do jungle market scene still, but I'm going to add a regional guidance layer and we're going to go back to our editing here. Uh, I think what I want to see is kind of like this area, the, uh, ocean sunset, take the auto negative off. Um, ocean backdrop is going to be positive prompt. And then maybe I'll add another regional guidance layer or, uh, mountain kind of make this a little bit of like a mini mountain is what I'm hoping for. And then we'll do regional guidance sky. 
And I'm going to do that. That's our sky. I'm a little bit loose on this. I'll press E to switch to the eraser and maybe take out some of this stuff. But it's not going to be overly sensitive, I don't think. Um, and we'll see what we get. So we switched the prompt. We added some more regional controls. We're still doing a jungle market scene, but we more want this to be on like a, a beach front, right? So we're in the jungle looking out into like some sort of uh, bay maybe. Um, and I think this will open up the scene a little bit um, and give us a much clearer uh, look. Okay, so definitely better. Uh, it's a little bit more like we're on a river now, which isn't quite what we want. Um, and so what I'm going to do is go in and add a regional guidance layer. I'm going to delete the prompt out because it's a positive prompt. I'm going to add a negative prompt. Um, and I'm going to add that negative prompt to this region here. I don't want river anywhere here. Uh, river, water. You know what? I'm going to add a positive prompt and say, you know, uh, ground market scene, uh, jungle ground. So we're kind of like biasing different sections to be more or less what we're going for in this. Um, I will also note that, uh, if you do have a Laura or if you have a, uh, any type of trigger that you want to use you can use those triggers. You have to load the LoRa for the entire generation, but you can um, go in and actually use those terms in regions. So the overall weights will still be modified by all the LoRas, but you will be triggering that concept in specific regions. So you can do that. I don't have any that I'm gonna use right now, but I'm just kind of highlighting ways that you could use that. And so now we're generating a scene. We've got our concept art. Um, we've biased this away from being like river. It's more of just like the jungle scene itself, but it's still on that bay. Um, and in this way, we're getting a lot of control because we're really able to convey what we want that scene to look like. Um, and I think this is definitely a lot closer to what I had when I looked at this. Um, it's a very, very nice, uh, layout and presentation. So we've kind of got our controlled scene. Um, and I think overall, this is one of the more interesting ways of getting creative control over the generation process. I think this is going to be a really, really powerful tool for a lot of artists. If, if you haven't played around with this, this is a magnificent way to get a lot of um, direct manipulation over content, especially when you have a control image. The control image really is key here. Um, I highly recommend using a control image. Okay, so we wanted someone asked for before and after here. We've got our before and our after, right? Like that. Keeps a lot of that same layout composition uh, and really kind of fleshes that out. Now, another thing that we could do, um, we can add another control adapter if we want to enforce these values. I'm going to move these to the back. It's a control adapter here. I'm going to throw this in, and I'm going to switch this to tile. Now, tile is an interesting one, and tile is actually a control net that we're going to play with in the canvas momentarily. I'm going to show you some cool tips and tricks, and I'm really... Today, I want to really convey how these tools can work as a part of the creative arsenal as, as part of your toolkit and using invoke i don't necessarily know that some of the techniques that i'm going to show you are directly applicable it, but i want to teach you how the tools work so that you can apply these creative tools to your own process so when i think of tile a tile control net typically what it's commonly used for is in upscaling right and the way that the tile control net works is you put in a, an image and during the generation process, it's biasing the generation to look exactly like that tile. So that's how you get a lot of the control when you're doing an upscale is it's using kind of individual tile references for upscaling. But what I found is really interesting is when you use that almost as a placeholder for kind of like a light image to image effect. It's not the same as image to image because image to image is really changing the denoising process itself. 
But if you think about tile, especially if you loosen it up to something like, you know, 0.4 ish in that range, um, you're biasing maybe some of the values and colors, but creating a little bit of freedom in doing that. And so we're going to bring this down to a 0.4. Um, we're maybe going to leave the begin and end step and we'll see where this lands. I might have to bring this down a little bit further, um, but we generated before and what I'm hoping to catch here is a little bit more of a bias on the values that I've created in that original sketch. Um, it should just make the darker areas more like the original because right now the only control I have is this like scribble, which is structural, but I really want to capture a lot of the depth and, and kind of the values that were provided. And so I'm bringing that in as a tile control and that's going to bias a lot of those areas throughout the entire generation process. So if we compare this to our original, you can see where a lot of that structure is still maintained. A lot of the values that were put in um, still captured there, uh, but we still get the same kind of full rendering effect because this is low. It's not overfitting to the color, but it is providing a lot of structural control as we bring this up. So I think that's a really, really cool technique and tool. Um, we'll go momentarily into the canvas and show some other creative ways of applying this. Uh, even when it's maybe not part of the initial uh, image. Like this is really kind of a coherent, consistent generation that stems from our initial image. There are some cool ways that we'll apply this momentarily, but really happy with that. Maybe we'll bring it down a little bit further and we'll also end it a little bit earlier. And that way we actually give it a little bit more freedom. A lot of what we are hoping for will still be there, but we'll give it a little bit more freedom to fix some of these other details because some of these people are a little bit off. Um, and so we're generating this and we're freeing up the generation towards the end so it can kind of fill out some of those details and give us a little bit more of what we're looking for, which is more of that kind of final detailed look. We can obviously go into the canvas and, and do some more work there. Um, cool. Well, this has like an interesting effect on this sky. Um, our people are a little bit better, which is kind of what I was hoping for by freeing that up. Now, if we compare this to the one where it was only controlled by Scribble, uh, I think see here i think arguably is like still the same i think we're in, still in a good spot i like the colors on this one better but uh this is kind of almost like you know it's becoming nighttime um and we're seeing some interesting stuff there so i'm gonna play around with this one because it's fun and i like the color values on this uh we're gonna do the unified canvas and we're gonna start playing around with some of the other stuff now what i found is really interesting on this type of workflow is what happens when you use this tile with a different image. And this is where I've got a couple of these um, kind of inputs over here and I'll bring up the, the viewer so we can look at these. I've got these kind of like very heavy brush stroke uh, templates. And this one is particularly interesting because it has this kind of like sun in the middle. So I'm going to go back to my canvas and I'm going to add a tile control nut that is very different than my initial image. Um, and we'll bring the denoising strength down because I want to retain a lot of what's in here. But by using this tile, I'm actually going to be biasing a lot of the texture, a lot of the brush strokes in. And you can imagine a lot of different ways that this might work, um, but I'm going to kind of like go in and maybe do this on the sky and do some in painting here. And the way that we can kind of envision this working is because we're regenerating these parts of the, the image, everything else is going to stay the same. But we're kind of shoving this very heavily textured sunset into this image. Um, and we're going to see, I think, a lot of interesting uh, results as, as uh, an outcome. So I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to shove it in, and we're going to see what we get. Uh, I, this is at a tile of one. So this is a very heavy tile. Um, we don't necessarily have to do that. We could do a much subtler um, look here, but there's definitely some interesting um, kind of like results that come in from this. Um, so we've got this, this nighttime sky that's taking the color of our initial image, but it's also imbuing this very heavily oil painting palette knife type um, texture to it. Uh, if we do a higher denoising strength, uh, what we'll find is that we'll get even more of that. Um, it might be too much, but I'm doing it anyways, just because it's fun um, and we can. 
but you can see we're kind of like imposing this. You can almost look at it as like a double exposure, right? You're almost imposing this second layer of content into the denoising process. So it's kind of trying to fuse both of those together. And I think you get some really interesting stuff when you do this. Um, obviously you might want to like tweak some things, but I, I think you get the general concept here is like we're, we're able to kind of superimpose content into what we're generating. And this could be really useful if we are trying to get certain aesthetic effects, if we're trying to create um, a little bit more of like a, a textured pattern look, um, we've got this like technique that we can use. I'm going to mix this up. Um, maybe I'll take some of this. Do I want to take some of this? It's kind of a cool effect. It's a little bit like unhinged maybe, but I do think it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to take it and I'm going to, I'm going to iterate on it. How about that? Yeah. I think this is, a. Uh, I think it's super fun. Um, someone's commenting on uh, the system speed. Uh, this is going to be faster than if you're running on a 2080. Um, I think when you're when you're working on tools like Invoke, one of the things that's really helpful is iteration speed. And so um, definitely will feel a lot more unlocked to iterate if you have sufficient resources. A uh, couple of ways that you can do that, obviously upgrading a GPU, but GPUs that can do this are going to be relatively uh, expensive. Uh, there are other ways like online services. Invoke has a hosted service and you would get this type of speed on that. Um, obviously, if you are doing this as a hobbyist, you're going to find that to be maybe cost prohibitive. And so finding solutions that give you the compute uh, are probably what you're going to be wanting to do. And I imagine if you ask around in the community, you can kind of get this speed. Um, but yeah, you'll get a much higher speed and, and I would say ultimately iterative flexibility when you are able to just kind of like go in and really do this type of work. And over time, I anticipate that this will become a standard and you're going to want that type of speed. Um, uh, but we'll go in, I'm going to pass in a different set of textures here in this tile. I'm kind of like using the same weight here, but now I'm going to get another little bit kind of like of a weird effect and we'll go ahead and use that. So it, we're, we're kind of swirling things towards the horizon here. Um, and look, we're looking to get a little bit of this like surreal, uh, hallucinatory effect. That's kind of why I did these big abstract brush strokes, uh, maybe too much there. Um, but it's pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to turn down the denoising strength and turn down the denoising strength. And then if I need to, I'll turn down the tile. Um, cause I want some of this, but I don't want to like completely lose everything that I already had. Um, I think I'm going to turn on the tile to about 0.55. Super cool though. There's like some real, some real fun exploration to be doing there. Uh, and discard that again. And then we'll do that one more time. Someone asked, would a black and white image be better for more strong results or is the weight that's all that's needed? Black and white definitely would be uh, a good way of like driving significant variations in contrast. Um, it's kind of like a cool little idea over here to explore is like this like building. Um, and you can actually see where that's coming from. If we uh, open this up, you can see there's like this point and this is like, this is one of the, I, I love this call out from the audience, which is like black and white imagery, similar to how this works with image to image, black and white, those big contrast differences where you've got like very dark next to very light is where you're going to see structure emerge. And that's what we've seen right here with the tip of this kind of like ship thing in, in the trees. It's almost like a shipwrecked thing that got like lifted up by the, the, the jungle, which I love. Um, that's coming from this shape that has, has emerged from this, right? So it's almost like you look at the clouds and you try to find structure in the clouds. That's a lot of what's happening when we put stuff like tile controls in. Um, and maybe we play with that. Maybe that's something that we continue to iterate on. So I'm going to accept that. And I'm going to say um, maybe a ship 
Uh, hoisted up by jungle foliage, trees, vines, ivy. Now, remember that I don't have to do any of this. Um, I don't have to do any of the style stuff because that's in the prompt template itself. Um, if I wanted to tweak any of that, I can flatten my template directly into the prompt. Um, and so that's just going to take all of this text and take it into the prompt so I can edit it manually. Um, and then it'll reset the prompt template. And I'll leave it as is for now because I don't want to do that. Um, and we're going to maybe do another pass of this ship. And then I'll go in and do some detailing on it. And I think that'll be super cool. Oh, I see that ship. I see that ship off in the distance. Oh, there it is. There it is. Cool. All right, so we're going to take off our tile control and we're going to zoom into this area. Now, what would be lovely, right? What would be lovely is if the tile image that I had of the entire scene was there as a control. And when I do this kind of zooming in, if only the region that was relevant to that is still there. That is hard to do right now. You kind of have to do a lot of manual cropping and a lot of manual manipulation of the controls. However, what is coming uh, with Control Canvas, uh, which is going to be the second iteration of, of the canvas, is going to be the ability to have this kind of static control image that's layered above everything else. And as you go in and work on things, you'll be able to compose new layers, be able to manipulate that and not have to reset your control canvas uh, when you do that. It's going to be extremely powerful. Uh, keep an eye out. Um, by the time this video goes out on YouTube, we'll probably be alpha testing. If you're watching this live, keep an eye out on the Discord because we'll be alpha testing that soon, 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 soon. Um, and it's going to be super cool. Uh, so we'll go in and maybe do just a little bit of editing on this to get some more details. Um, we can maintain our structure here just by bringing our denoising strength uh, down. And that'll help us get some more detail on this thing. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. Like that ship. There's probably some details here that we need to, to maybe tweak, but it's actually pretty good because a lot of this might be vines and ivy anyways. Some of these ropes are a little bit off. It's probably what I would tweak more than anything. Um, but yeah, I still like the, uh, the overall ship. Some of those details are pretty cool. Um, so we've got that. Maybe we'll go in and uh, people in a jungle market uh, just do some quick detailing on these folks. Um, bah, 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 bah. So someone said, uh, tell something about custom XL. And somebody said, you'll get similar results with Juggernaut XL. I don't think that's true. Um, custom XL is very different, <laughs> uh, than juggernaut it is got a little bit of juggernaut in there it's got a lot of everything else um, there's been fine tuning there's been ties and dare merging it is just this like amalgamation of a bunch of different stuff I, I don't even know anymore what it is it just works and i've kind of tuned it based on my personal preferences um, people have asked if i will release it for a number of reasons i don't want to and it's not because I don't want to share it. Maybe maybe I can share it and say that you just can't use it uh, without, I don't know, uh, recognizing that it is like license unknown um, because I, I don't know what has gone into it at this point. It's it's a little bit of like everything and I think has incorporated a lot of like uh, various stuff at this point. Um, so that's what it is. I, I will contemplate releasing it, but it is, it is uh, a little bit of like... Um, an all over the place model that I've just kind of like manipulated and smashed together um, with fine tuning and merging and all that kind of stuff. It's like a black box. <laughs> um, if you if you are interested in doing that for your own models, um, there are open source scripts that Invoke AI provides for training. Uh, it's the Invoke training repo. It also has model merging scripts, and you can do some more advanced types of merging. You can merge Laura's in. You can merge between different models. You can select individual like parts of it. 
uh, using ties and dare. There's a lot of different merging techniques out there. Um, it's a fun way to get different styles, especially if you're doing, um, if you train Allura and then you merge that in and you kind of isolate the specific areas that you want to merge in, there's like a whole host of things that you can do to really kind of move a model in a certain direction. So, um, the base of this was, if I remember an older juggernaut model, um, and it has gotten very, very, uh, different from that. Uh, but I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna kind of like isolate some people here and get some more details. Might be a little bit too high on the denoising strength because it, it is reimagining quite a bit of details, but for now we'll just get some more detail in and be happy with it. Uh, we'll get these folks. And... Cool. We got like a nice little scene here. Um, we've got this cool looking sky. It makes it feel a little bit surreal. Um, maybe all we're missing is like a, an animal of some sort. Um, I'm like tempted to draw something in here that would give us a little bit of like flavor for the scene. Maybe like a weird cat looking thing. Just gonna like get some color down. And I know I just like drew over our people. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you're less relevant now because I want this cat. So I'm doing like some big old eyes here primarily because I want it to like map to that. I want to kind of anchor on that contrast as I do this. Um, someone asked question, does this work for texturing? Me and Gogurt were a while back, had some issues texturing human skin. I'm wondering if setting a base and adding more weight would generate more realistic skin like results. You could try. I, I would definitely think that this could help with texturing. The, the problem I would say with skin texture is going to be like very contextual to the, the specific angle and the distance and things like that. So could be could be i would play around with it um i but i do think the tile is very very good for adding a little bit of grit and a little bit of texture to things if you've got like a generic tile that you're applying um so we're going to get this one here and we're going to say a strange surreal cat with glowing eyes you want to say cat lizard hybrid Okay. Cat lizard hybrid with glowing eyes. Uh, this might be too low. I'm gonna I'm gonna try 0. 0.5, and we'll see if we get enough of a change here. It's not enough of a change. <laughs> uh, we're going to increase this to maybe 0. 0.6. Might even want more of a change, but we'll we'll see what this gives us first. Uh, I think I want a little bit more change, but what I'm gonna do to get that instead of increasing the denoising strength. I'm going to accept and then reiterate on top of that. And that is kind of like a second order change. Um, it'll give it a little bit more freedom and it'll kind of push it a little further, but it won't go completely off the rails, which can happen if you get that um, a little bit too high on the denoising side. So we'll do that one more time. And then I think we've got our like weird looking cat lizard um, exactly where, where I wanted it. Although the eyes are like the wrong color, so I'm going to tweak that a little bit. Really like this like vibrant blue glowing. And it can help with the prompt. I, sometimes that's that's where it gets a little bit out there. Um, well, we'll do one more. Do one more. Try to get push it out a little bit more. And said, yeah, I'm going to give this tile a try. That seems to be my biggest drawback from using Invoke more heavily. Uh, Photoshop can do a good job at textures, but suck for shapes. Invokes the other way around. Some models create amazing human anatomy, but whenever I patch legs or arms, the textures look oddly Lego-y, shiny, and almost plastic. I would say that's pro probably more a function of the model, to be quite honest. Um, you you want to get a model that has... What I, what I found is that there are a... There's a range of models... And 
Some are really good at structure. Some are good at texture. Some are good, and those are the best ones at both. Um, but you can actually find good results from, I would say, oscillating between one and the other. So if you've got one that does one thing well, then you can start with that and then go back and do very light denoising paths, passes with the other model. Um, so if you get the structure down and you get the scene well uh, created, then you can go back and kind of pass over that with light denoising with something that offers a little bit more grit and texture. And that could be a really good way of getting that. Um, you'll see that with upscaling as well. If you use the upscaling tab, you use the right model for upscaling, it can actually add a lot more detail. There's LORAs that will help with that as well. You really just wanna kind of get that texture concept in so that when it's generating those um, elements, it's got a, a good basis to work off of. Um, I like our cat looking thing here. I think we're good on this. Um, and it is, it's looking good overall. I mean, this scene is kind of what I was hoping for. So we've got like a little view into this world, right? There's kind of this like pirate ish looking thing off in the distance where there's like this big shipwreck thing that's become a village and a town. There's like a market here. Uh, we can imagine like getting over there somehow. We might want to fiddle with some of the, the details on this in you know, the outside region, but for now, I think we're going to call this a, a good, good piece and we will save it out and compare it to our original. Um, so we landed there and we started there, right? So now we've got like our nice, more well-rounded scene, kind of the initial foreground here based on the values of this image, we got people walking around, uh, and now we've added a lot of that color and kind of the depth here. Um, obviously this, I would say it was very heavily influenced by the color that came out of one of the generations that we iterated on because we went with this instead of something like this or this. And I think it would look very different if we had gone with one of these, but I do like where we landed and ultimately think it was um, kind of the right call. Uh, just kind of looks super cool here, especially with these more like hallucinatory looks. Um, so let's play around a little bit more since we've got like four minutes left. We did, we're doing a little bit of a short one today uh, due to the technical difficulties. Let's see what happens when we use two tiles together. Um, just because I, I think it's like a good idea to play around with uh, understanding this stuff. Um, so I'm going to take this. It's kind of like the values that we're bringing in on the tile. Um, we can see where the dark will be. We can see where the light will be. Um, and we'll make that... 0.6 throughout. We'll add another tile. Maybe this one will be this kind of looking saying here. I don't see. Do I want this one instead? No, I think we like we like this one. Um, this looks cool. I'm going to bring this down. Um, we're going to say urban decay, uh, a group of people underneath a massive, this looks kind of like a bridge and monument. Uh, and we can maybe switch our style here to something different. Maybe we'll go. <laughs> concept art sci-fi we'll try that and see what we get i don't know i don't know if this is gonna look good we'll see uh we'll bring this tile down a little bit this tile's here yeah we'll give it a go we'll see what we're playing around we're playing around tile section so that's somebody called um obviously we're going to get some like more artistic looking stuff because we're using a very like abstract looking brush tile um but it should give us some cool understanding at least of how using multiple tiles works in the generation process. Um, it's kind of cool. I like it. It's a cool style. Um, what did we get here? If we compare this, um, you can see where it kind of pulled out a little bit of like the color bias, um, and kind of gave it this kind of like, uh, outward brush stroke type look where it's kind of like splattered there. 
Um, it adds a lot of nice texture there. It didn't override the color too much because we kept it low. Um, and if we compare this to our, this guy, compare this to our original, we can see that we've got a lot of the same structure, but now we've gotten a little bit of um, texture baked in as well. Um, and overall, I think our concept art, our sci-fi concept art gave it this really cool, like depth, the background, we've got like this, you know, city in the distance, we've got some like survivors here. Um, somebody asked, did you set the weights so they add to one on purpose? No, uh, but this is how you get those like math conspiracies, right? So it's like, what does it mean? What does it mean? No, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to have those add up to one. In fact, we'll like play around with maybe them both being 0.6. I really just wanted t this tile to be around 0.6 and then this to be less, but we'll see what happens when we have them equal. What I anticipate is that we'll get too much color um, and structure from this other tile that we're not really looking for. Um, that's why I primarily set it to 0.4. Um, what happens with max weight? If you have max weight uh, with tile, you do get the original image or it tries to. If you have both of them at one, you're probably gonna get some weird stuff. Let's see what happens. Uh, yes, <laughs> the numbers, Mason, what do they mean? Uh, so both of them at one, you get this kind of like very strong double exposure effect, right? It's trying to generate both images at the same time at full fidelity. And you get this kind of like overlay um, effect, which can be cool in its over or in its own way. And somebody asked if you go over one, what happens? Um, so, you know, you can start to see uh, bias towards our values, increasing color, both at one, we have gotten this kind of like cracked glass look, right? Um, if we have it over one, we're for, we're foraying into lands unknown. Uh, we are going to try 1.5 and one. Um, my computer might explode. That's what might happen. I'm just joking. Uh, there's not more resources, the higher weight. Um, I anticipate that it'll still have a very like oversaturated effect with the color, but maybe we'll get more bias to our original structure. We've got more structure from our original. Uh, someone said the slider should turn red and an exclamation should show up. I'm not trying to tell people not to do it, but you know, you're, you are in control of your own destiny. Um, I do think this is pretty cool though. I mean, generally speaking, and what we could do is bring that in and do that with our original values and kind of regenerate it there and see if we can get a little bit more of this um, structure that we had while also getting some of the kind of like unhinged um, surreal vibes that came from that oversaturated look. All in all, I think it looks pretty cool. It's like a cool scene. Yeah, it's still a little bit like too oversaturated. So I might like bring that down and then get something that we like a little bit more. Uh, this is interesting though, because these are both very similar in the values. I think there is like a compounding effect here. So whereas we had it different before, this might be too, too much of the same thing. It's kind of like when you generate an image with one seed and then generate again as an initial image with the same seed, it can kind of get overbaked. Um, this, this is cool. Um, I still think this one's kind of like our best where we got a lot of this like cool, uh, texture and color out of this that almost makes it look like ink and watercolor. Um, this is good too, though. Um, and I think you could probably go in and imagine detailing this one out. Um, someone said, yeah, it's kind of like a graphic novel look. I agree. Uh, although we did get this like runes or this like glyphs on this bridge over here, which is super cool as well. Um, so we'll call that uh, today's session. Uh, hopefully you all picked up some cool creative techniques for using both the control layers as well as controls in the canvas. Um, what I'm really excited for is showcasing how these are going to inform the development of the control canvas, which is going to come soon. So if you are attending live, keep an eye out in discord for the alpha testing. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact, uh, you're probably, uh, late, but you can still join and, uh, hopefully we'll test it out soon. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for bearing with the technical difficulties. We'll see you next time.